there, I'm Sandy Alnock here with Create in Color, my monthly installment on MFT. And I'm using Party Like a Pirate to stamp the images. I started with the images in front, the ones you see, added masks onto them, stamped the second pirate and the little treasure chest, then masked that out to stamp the little boy in the back that's holding the pirate little flag. And I'm going to use watercolors this time. And I've enlarged the one on the, the image on the right hand side, what I'm going to actually be painting, and they're almost timed together. It's hard to do this split screen, but I thought it might help for you to see how I'm mixing my paints. Because a lot of people either wonder, do they need all the colors? Or do they, how do you mix colors? How do you decide what colors to mix with what? What I wanted to do in this one was to make very rustic looking colors something that would be a little more masculine for perhaps an older boy who likes pirate cards, not necessarily for one with just lots of happy colors. And I'm using a couple of my yellows and browns to mix some skin tones. And you'll notice I'm mixing on the paper to some extent. I mix on my palette, but I'm also mixing on the paper. Doing both is just sometimes how things come out of my brush. I don't have a science to it. But for the most part, you can mix any kind of skin tone using the different browns, oranges, and yellows that you have. And if it doesn't come out right, if you want it to be darker, then add more color to it. it it's something that there's no science that says one dab of this and one dab of that. My colors that I'm, I use for skin tones tend to be a little bit of quinacridone gold, a little bit of quinacridone burnt orange, and then some sepia. And I mix those in different quantities. So for darker skin, I put in more sepia. If I want something lighter, then I might use more water and less pigment. And here I decided I wanted this little boy to be even darker. So I just went in with a little more sepia to add to it and tapped in a little bit more dark color for some shadow areas. Just play around with your colors. And if you don't have any browns, the colors that make browns are everything else. <laughs> so if you put a little bit of red, blue, and yellow in different quantities on your palette, you will come out with a brown, I guarantee you. It'll always be a different kind of brown based on the amount of each pigment that you put down on your palette though. And it's hard to make the same mix twice. So if you have a large area you're gonna paint, make sure you mix up a good amount if you need the same color for all of it. But I'm making colors here, just a whole series of browns first. Browns using a lot of the quinacridone gold, so I have some brighter yellow color. And here I've got some sepia down, and I'm going to use some water to move the color around. So you don't even have to paint the whole thing with pigment. You can paint with water and let the water carry the pigment across the area that you're coloring. Now I've got my skin tones and stuff done, so I'm going to just start bouncing around the image and putting some other colors in here. The quinacridone gold turns into a really nice yellow once it's really watered down and painted out, or it can be a little heavier of a color, more of a traditional metallic type of gold look. So you can get a lot of different looks out of that one color of paint. I wanted to have some green in here, but I didn't want anything too bright. So I'm trying to do dim colors. So I just mix some green with the browns that were left on my palette. And that makes a really nice dingy green for her. And one of the things I was thinking of is if these kids were actually out on Pirate Island and having um, a little, little fun out there, they wouldn't really be clean. Their outfits would not be bright and cheerful. So even though some of these colors are a little more cheerful than others, not necessarily going to be the brightest thing in the whole wide world because they're out playing. These are play clothes. I wanted to mix a black color because some people don't want to buy a black. You don't paint with black very much. So I mixed sepia with Indian throne blue. So a navy blue with a dark brown. And it came out like pretty close to a black color. It'll look black compared to everything else. And depending on how much of each of those two colors you use, you can push that one way or the other. And I decided to paint a little bit on his pants as well, and I'll do his hat in black. And of course, a gray would be a watered down version of black. And you can let these dry and then add more layers on if you want a darker pigmented color. 
And I like to kind of wait and let things dry a little bit and see what it's going to look like before I put in too much color of something because I don't really want to change things if I'm not sure of how it's going to come out in the long run. And there I wanted to add some shadows onto the treasure chest. So I added a wash of that black that I had in my brush on the bottom section and just a little tiny bit in those inset sections on the top. Little bird up here needed some color, so I thought I'll use a little more blue, even though it's got some brown in it, because that blue would normally be more bluish. And I'm using a little bit of the brown mixed in with it, just to soften it a little bit. It's not going to be as intense, and all of this will maintain that same kind of not super bright tones, but really uniform across the whole thing. And then I painted with just water and a little bit of leftover paint to do his tummy so he has a little bit of differentiation in his color as well. A lot of what I do too with my watercolors is I use up the colors that are on my palette. So I had some extra blue there so I'll add some extra blue onto this little boy's outfit. And I try to use up whatever's in those mixing wells in what I'm painting. So a lot of times that will determine the colors that I pick because that's what's left over. It unfortunately means that I can't say I mix this with that because it's often a group of things that have been left over. And, you know, it, it's not like I can go back and remember exactly what shades were left on the mixing palette. But once you watercolor enough, you start getting a feel for if I want to take this color and make it brighter, what would I do to it? And that's a great thing to practice when you're coloring an image like this. A lot of these colors really don't matter a whole lot. There's nothing here that has to be a particular color other than the skin tones because you're dealing with outfits. So it's a great time to practice mixing your colors and seeing what colors are going to change what others into what kinds of shades. And here I had more of that Indian throne blue mixed with the sepia and I put another layer over his pants so he'd have nice dark pants. And then I can add a little bit more to his hair as well. Give him another little punch there. And just keep working my way around the image with whatever colors are there on my palette and use them all up. I was thinking at the time, you know, did I want to put them on a pirate ship or did I want them on an island or where, where exactly did I want to put them? Because I like to set scenes for the characters in the stamp scenes that I do. And these guys, I didn't really see them on a boat because they're little kids. Not sure little kids on a boat would be a great thing. They'd need to have some grown-up pirates around them to help. But they could be playing pirate on an island. And so as I was messing around with this, I thought, let's make an island for them. I did have that one little bit of bright orangey hair for the little girl because I wanted one punch of a bright color, but I wanted everything else to sort of set back a little bit. That draws some attention to her because since she's got so much else busy around her, she could tend to disappear. So it was helpful to give her a little punch of color to bring her forward a little bit. Put a little tiny bit of color on her spyglass. And then I grabbed a waterproof pen to make just a really simple arc for the island hillside. And then I just started mixing colors to try to find a sand color. And I used some quinacridone gold with whatever was left on my palette to see what that would look like and have a lot of water in it so I have enough to cover the whole area, spread it all around. And then I can add some more colors to it. So I added some sepia to darken it so I could get some darker colors under them because they were sort of disappearing into the same color that their legs were. So I wanted the the dirt they were standing on to be a little darker. Add a little bit more in there. And by the way, I'm using a silver brush, the number eight round size for this. And supplies are going to be listed on the blog as well as over on my website as well. I have some information about classes too if you're interested in taking some watercolor classes. There's some of that over there. Now I wanted to mix up some color for the water. So I mixed, again, that same kind of a mix, a little bit of the brown along with the Indian Throne Blue. And I wanted to keep it a little bit dull. I didn't want too much in there, but I realized it was, I, I took out too much of the pop of color in there. 
was also trying to keep it away from blending into the, the sand that I had just painted because it wasn't dry yet. So I took a little heavier mix of the Indian Throne and let a little bit more of the blue in there. It also gave me a little difference in color in the background. To finish off my card, I just tied a little bit of twine around the top and made a little bow because I didn't want it to be super fancy and frilly since it's a great card for a little boy and popped it onto some black cardstock for a card base. Hope you enjoyed this. Watch some other videos. Be sure to subscribe to MFT so you can get lots more. Go follow them on Instagram and Facebook and everywhere else, and I'll see you next month.